Armored Core Law, a mere science. Scientists, political masterminds, or mass murderers. Can a corporation really be all of these and more? This is Omer Science. Omer Science history is one covered in dark spots, not lost to time but simply hangs in a space unknown, as intended by this corporation, as behind the scientists hide cruel puppet masters who will play the world to suit their needs. Of course this corporation did not start as a master of pulling strings, in fact this West Asian military company found itself as a subsidiary of the Rosenthal Corporation, who at the time clearly had some say in operations and business matters. The National Dismantlement War is what put Omer under the thumb of Rosenthal, but with this also came the time and investment they needed to compete with Avakit, leading Omer Science to become one of the leading corporations in Kojima technology. It made Omer Science stand out from Rosenthal, who after the war seemed happy to stay neutral and tried to keep to themselves in this new world. However, Omer was not so settled, as the corporation at this point seemed to join in with the underhanded tactics of supplying anti-corporation forces and even quicker to side with GA when they saw this would give them a chance to strike directly at their rival, Avakit. A mission to point out this sudden eagerness to dive into the war comes from the mission asking Anatolia's mercy to defend a BFF tanker against Omir Bay submarines in the Antarctic Ocean. At this time also, it is clear that no subsidiary will be doing all this without major support from their holding company. The methods Omar used to convince Rosenthal to support them in this war effort could be a number of things. Sadly, we can only guess as this meeting between the two is kept in the dark and never seemed to be made public, but made them more powerful within the Rosenthal group. Unfortunately, or perhaps as planned, Omir was quickly forced to the sidelines due to suffering heavy losses in a number of skirmishes, after which they avoided direct engagement from then on, instead leaning on Aspina, a next technology research institute heavily affiliated with Omer Science Technology, who let Omer use one of their rising links by the name of Joshua O'Brien to fight for them. The only time Omer Science would show up again in battle is when the corporation would suddenly send their links Mido to the Battle of the Abandoned City, alongside Rosenthal's Leonhardt and Anatoly's Mercer working under contract to GA at the time. The three of them together were able to take out Berlioz and his elite next squadron. The outcome of the battle, however, seemed to point to the fact Mindo would not survive this encounter. After this battle, Omir once again only have to watch as Ray Leonard and Avakit is destroyed by Joshua O'Brien and Antolia's mercenary. Shortly after this news, however, Omar would reportedly force Joshua O'Brien to attack Anatolia, presumably under the threat of Aspina's destruction with an early prototype next, knowing it result in the battle against Anatolia's mercenary. Many have questioned why this battle would need to happen, and there are some theories, the first being a way to tie up loose ends. After all, who knows how long the fierce Joshua would stand by and let Omar order his own about. The second theory is that this was done to wipe out Anatolia, its next, and test their new creation against the foe that some say won the war alone. You could say it was the final cleanup before the next part of their plan, get rid of the science team who could create a counter to this new machine and wipe out a mercenary who could turn on them. Alas, whatever their reasons, Omir would take a hard blow here, as not only would Anatolia's mercenary destroy the early prototype, but also in the life of their main links, Cello and his next testament, with stories of the man laughing as he died, making some look at him as being the result of being a test subject of Omir science. Yet even with all this, Omir science, however, would only grow, gaining a firm technological advantage when they took in a number from engineers from Raylionard after it fell, they would also start to gain political might. Starting within the Rosenthal group, Omir's growth saw them almost switch places with their holding company, with Rosenthal being pushed into the backseat position, with the group's name being changed to the Omir group, now consisting of Omir subsidiaries or affiliates, including Algebra, Technocrat, and the new Aspina Corporation. If this was not enough, Omir's political arm would also manage to take high-powered positions within Collard, and even the League itself, being the corporation who wanted to push the idea of peace between the corporations. Sadly, this was all a lie, as really the League in other corporations' eyes was nothing more than a front for the influential Omir science to push their own goals. By the time of Armored Corps for answer, it is clear that Omar seized power within the League of Ruling Corporations, although failed to achieve complete control due to the independent streak of such groups as GA and Taurus. It should also be mentioned here that there is suspicion that Omer Science helped to fund Orca, though no official member of Omar would comment on this matter. There was a strong belief 
In this, as it is stated at the time of Walker coming out of the shadows, that Lee quickly started to back away from stopping these terrorists, seeming to stop supporting the effort overnight. It is a strong case, seeing as at the time Umer's science led the League and easily could have rallied, but chose not to. If this was the case, however, why? Did Omar want to launch the closed plan, but not dirty their own hands, or their position of power within the League? The answer we may never know for sure. Products Being one of the leaders of Kojima technology, Omir's science has produced a number of parts for necks as well as armed forts. In Armored Core 4, some of these next parts include the Judith series, which includes head, arms, legs, generator, and an FCS. The Hollow Furnace series, which includes a head part and side booster part, and the Palaz, an overboost said to be a high-grade part with perfectly balanced performance. As for weapons during this time, Omiya focus seemed to be on laser weapons, including arm weapons like the EBO-305, a highly adaptable new laser blade with an especially long blade, the EBO-600, a small-scale storageable laser blade, and the ERO-200, a laser rifle with low energy use for mobile combat. They also produced back weapons, including some scatter missiles, such as the MPO-200, scatter missiles that fly as a wall of explosives, the MPO-200I, scatter missiles upgraded for a larger number of missiles, and the MPO-203, scatter missiles that fly in a broad horizontal spread. But this is not all, as Omir would produce other back weapons, like the ECO-300, a well-balanced, light and energy-efficient laser cannon, the MPO-601JC, difficult to avoid PM missiles that strike a target's flank, and the RDF-0200, a balanced radar unit that offers a quick refresh rate. Finally, for this time period, Omar would also produce the AR-0401, a scattering EMC device which impedes radar function. In Armored Core for answer, production of such parts would continue with a new next series being produced, known as the Lahiri series, which would be a complete set including all types of boosters. Along with this, the Judith and the Palace overboosters would be upgraded to keep older necks running, and a new part, the KRB Sobrier, would be Omir's experimental OB, with improved armor assault capabilities. For weapons, Omir would move a little away from their solid focus on laser weapons, with the first case being the AR-0700, Omir's latest assault rifle evolving from the former Raelianard's version, the Marv, and the SG-0700, a shotgun that fires highly concentrated shots. But the corporation would still produce laser weapons and move more into using Kojima technology in their weapons. Some of the newest laser weapons include the EG-0703, a storageable pulse gun similar to the feel of a shotgun, the ER-0705, a highly advanced experimental weapon similar to a laser bazooka, and the KB-004, a special close-range weapon that causes a huge-scale Kojima explosion. Back weapons also kept being produced, including some new, like the ACB-0710, a booster used to increase forward boost speed, and the MPO-700, distributed guided missiles for close-range combat, along with new PM missiles, the MP-0901, and radar, the RDF-0700. The corporation also has a production history with a single arms fort, known as the Answerer. Produced by Omer and Interior Union, Answerer is a floating arms fort armed with the latest in Kojima technology, including Kojima beams, Kojima missiles, and assault armor, as well as conventional technology such as missiles and lasers. Some may believe the arms fort Eclipse also was produced by Omir, however this was not the case, as instead Omir has been recorded to have purchased a large number of these arms fort by the time of the economic war. Links employed. There is a question to be had on this subject, as it is noted that some of these necks and links belonged to Aspina, a next technology research institute, but they were heavily affiliated with Omir's science technology. As such, some will be shown on both lists, and we ask you to keep this fact in mind. Cello, pilot of testament, killed by Anatolia's mercenary in Cedar Barren Earth in Armored Core 4. Cube, pilot of fragile, disabled in mission Defend Linark in Armored Core 4 Answer. Joshua O'Brien. 
pilot of White Glint, killed by Anatoly's mercenary in Seed of Barren Earth, Armored Core 4. Mido Oriel, pilot of Null, killed by Berlioz's unit in Armored Core 4. Ostavia, pilot of Stasis, killed by the Raven in attack on Terio Corellium, or killed by the Raven in occupation of Arterio Carpels in Armored Core 4 answer. Palmeta, pilot of Anzu, alive but whereabouts unknown. Rezaya, pilot of Ruler, alive but whereabouts unknown. In conclusion, all that can be said is that this corporation that once was simply known as a leading expert in the field became a puppet master of some, a backdoor politician, and a corporation that will have history questioning their motives for as long as they are remembered. This ends the report on the corporation known as Omir Science.